School. From the Rabbit Hole. Hi, I'm Amelia, I'm 12, and I'm meaning BIM. Today I'm going to be explaining the Member Wimble Protocol so you can understand it too. So what is Member Wimble? Member Wimble is a ridiculously named technology that stops blockchain from blabbing personal information. It's named after a Harry Potter spell that stops people from spilling secrets. Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin paper has a section titled Privacy, in which Nakamoto is very realistic about Bitcoin's privacy limitations. These limitations have gotten worse as adversaries have gotten better at using data Bitcoin spills to dox or de-anonymize Bitcoin users. This surprised some people who thought Bitcoin was private because it doesn't disclose names. Let's look at what data it does disclose and why. Bitcoin blabs three secrets about every transaction. 1. Sender's address. 2. Amount of coins sent. 3. Receiver's address. Bitcoin doesn't reveal these because it hates privacy. It reveals them because any money system, gold, cash, barter, has to fulfil two requirements. 1. It has to verify that the amount received is equal to the amount sent. A cryptocurrency would be hopelessly broken if I could make a transaction sending one coin from one address and receiving two at another address. If I put five euros in your hand, five euros leave my hand and five enter your hand. I lose five, you gain five, no money is created from thin air during the transaction and none vanishes. Two. I cannot initiate a wire transfer from your bank account, but rather only from my own. We have to verify that the transaction is sent by the holder of a debit card and a PIN, or the online banking password, or the private key in the case of cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin fulfills the two requirements by spilling these three secrets. 1. Sender's address. 2. Amount of coins sent. 3. Receiver's address. Bitcoin transactions contain the amount and the receiver's address in plain text. That is enough to meet the first requirement. We see that five bitcoins went into the transaction and five came out. To verify that the second requirement is fulfilled, Bitcoin uses these public addresses with the corresponding private keys. The public address owns the bitcoins. The sender generates a signature using the corresponding private key and signs his transaction, which, I repeat, contains the amount and the receiver's address in plain text. Everyone can check that the signature comes from the private key behind the address that holds the coins. This way we can know the signature comes from the guy with the authority to initiate the transaction. The claim I am going to make of Mimblewimble is that it fulfills the two requirements while spilling zero of the three secrets. I am going to demonstrate this with some simple maths, comprehensible to an educated 10 year old and also some more advanced maths comprehensible to an educated 12 year old. Multiplying is easy, but factorising is hard. A lot of people are scared of maths and skip over it when they see it in an essay. Well, are you scared of this maths? 23 times 19 equals what? 111 times 47 equals what? 932 times 31 equals what? If I gave you a pen and paper in two minutes, you could solve any of these, right? It's pretty easy for people to multiply numbers. As for computers, even a tiny pocket computer can multiply millions by millions just as quickly as you can press the buttons. But let's make one little change. Let's just move the question marks to the other side. What times what equals 923? What times what equals 1,463? What times what equals 4,221? Now, if I gave you a pen and paper in two minutes, could you solve these? Probably not. All we did was switch the direction of the operation and it became much harder. By the way, throughout this piece I'm going to talk about multiplying numbers like 8 and 23 because I like those numbers and they're familiar to and easy to understand. Computers don't use numbers like that, they use wonderfully big numbers in the squillions. A computer could in fact figure out what two numbers I multiplied together to make 4,221. But it's even harder to, for a powerful modern computer to find out what you multiply together to get an answer in the squillions. For simplicity, I'm not going to get into a discussion of elliptic curves. In practice, encryption systems don't use just any numbers 
for a particular category called elliptic curve points. The same simple mathematical property is at work. That multiplying is easy, that factorising is the opposite of multiplying, and factorising is hard. Exploiting the properties of multiplication to hide information and verify ownership. So, if I ask you the missing numbers here, 11 times 57 times what? Times 17 times what? Equals 20,340,031. You can't easily tell me because the question marks are on the left. It's hard to figure out missing factors. Okay, I'll tell you. It's 23 and 83. Now, you want to check I'm telling the truth. Is it really 23 and 83? To verify my claim, you have a multiplication problem on your hands. And multiplication is easy. 11 times 57 times 23 times 17 times 83 equals what? You can quickly solve that and see that, yes, those are indeed the factors that make it equal 20,348,031. 11 times 57 times 23 times 17 times 83 equals 20,348,031. If I had lied, you would easily find out, because my factors wouldn't have given you the big number on the right. I can't lie about the missing factors, and I can't guess them or calculate them. I have to know them in advance. Note, by the way, that the big number on the right is divisible by all the numbers on the left that we use to construct it. It's divisible by 83 and by 11 and all the others. We'll exploit the property later. This is just the multiplication. Educated 10 year olds know this. But we accomplished two very important things for the yeah. cryptocurrency. We wanted to hide information. Well, now we know how to do that. We can hide information by multiplying by unknowns. That makes it difficult to unscramble. And we also wanted to prove we hold private keys. Well, now we know how to do that too. By disclosing the factors of big numbers, we did all of that just by exploiting the basic properties of multiplication. Hiding transaction amounts. Let's use our trick of hiding information by multiplying it by big secret numbers. One of the three pieces of information Bitcoin Blab is the amount of coins sent. When I send five bitcoins to the Bitcoin blockchain, that the number is represented in plain text as five. So let's conceal that by multiplying it by some other numbers. You can easily tell me the amount here. Amount times big number equals the amount part. The key times the big number is the key part. This is called the Pedersen commitment. I don't know why. The important thing to realise is that it contains an amount part, but hides the amount by multiplying it by a big number and a private key part. Note that the sender and the receiver both participate in creating the transaction. This is pretty different from Bitcoin. This gets around the need to blab the recipient's address, but makes it necessary for some other way for the sender to reach the recipient. Beam includes a secure BBS system separate from the Beam blockchain to allow sender and the recipient to exchange their Pedersen commitments. For simplicity, I'm leaving out fees. In practice, when I send money to a friend or a vendor, I always send a little bit to the miners' fees. The principle is the same. I'm also leaving out something called range proofs that prove that the hidden amount is not a negative number because sending negative five would be like zapping five free coins into my wallet. Maybe there's a different Harry Potter spell for that. You can multiply two numbers by a third, either separately or together. This next bit is the most advanced maths we're going to do. Here in Scotland, you don't learn it in school until you're 12, when you're practically a big girl. A plus B times C equals A times C plus B times C. If I want to multiply 2 and 4 by 3, I can smooth the 2 and 4 together, making it 6, and then multiplying that 6 by 3, making 18. Or else, I can first multiply 2 by 3, giving me 6, then multiplying 4 by 3, giving me 12, and for a total of 18. 2 times 3 plus 4 times 3 equals 2 plus 4 times 3 equals 18. The point I want to drive into your mind is, when we multiply two numbers by a third, we can either add them together 
and multiply them by a third, or we can first multiply one by the third, then the other. The two processes are equivalent, proving that money in equals money out. Remember that one of the requirements of a money system is the amount received minus the amount sent must equal zero. I put five euros in your hand, you get five euros. Five minus five equals zero. We can prove that using the tricks already mentioned. A member wimble transaction consists of two pairs of commitments, one for the money that goes into the transaction and one for the money that comes out. Amount sent times big number is the input amount part. The key one times big number is the input key part. Plus, amount received times big number is the output amount part. The key two times the big number is the output key part. For example, if the sender loses five and the recipient gains five, negative five times big number one is the input amount part, plus key one times big number two is the input key part, plus five times the big number one is the out output amount part, plus key two times the big number two is the output key part. But instead of multiplying the input amount by the big number and then multiplying the output amount by the big number separately, we're entitled to smoosh them together like this. Negative five plus five times big number one is merged amount part plus P1 plus key two times the big number two is a merged key part. Five minus five is zero. Multiplying it by a big number and it's still zero. We're left with zero times big number one is a merged amount part plus key number one plus key number two times big number two is a merged key part or just key one plus key two times the big number two is a merged key part. The amount part vanished yet at every step the amounts were always blinded by multiplying them by big unknowns. We verified they came to zero without disclosing what they were. The reason the amount part vanished is because money in and money out were equal. If they were not equal, then they would not have come to zero, and so we'd be left with more than just the key part. 3, the amount part, plus 20,348,031, the key part, equals 20,348,034, the transaction kernel. And therefore, the transaction kernel would not be divisible by the private keys 23 and 83. The BEAM protocol would reject this transaction as malformed. You may notice in this example if the amount number was not zero, but was something itself divisible by 23 and 83, say 1909. Then the kernel would still be divisible by 23 and 83. This coincidence is possible because of the small numbers I am using to illustrate the point. With splendidly huge multi squillion numbers that computers use, the chances of this coincidence are as close to zero as makes no difference. What's left is just the key part. Key 1 plus key 2 times big number 2 is merged key part. This is a delightfully big number constructed by multiplying together private keys from the sender and the receiver, and another big number. The private keys will divide neatly into just like 83 and 23 were secret numbers that divided neatly into the big number here. 11 times 57 times what? Times 17 times what? Equals 20,348,031. So there are two reasons that the transaction kernel is divisible by the private keys. One, because the amount part came to zero. Two, because the key part was formed by multiplying a bunch of numbers, including our private keys of 83 and 23. These are the two requirements we have for any money system. One, if the amount part came to zero, that means the amounts in minus amounts out equals zero. In other words, the amounts in and amounts out are equal. In short, no money vanished and none was created. We have accomplished that. First, by hiding them through multiplying them by a big unknown and then smooshing them both together, letting them cancel to zero. 
well under the cloak of the big blinding number. Two, the second requirement was to prove that the transaction was generated by the holder of the private key. The sender proves that showing that his private key divides into the transaction kernel, which means it was a factor that constructed the kernel. Mimblewimble arguably achieves Bitcoin's goals better than Bitcoin itself, certainly if privacy is a goal. Unlike some privacy coins which add obfuscation on top of Bitcoin, Mimblewimble achieves it by cutting. Beam launched using the Mimblewimble protocol on 3rd of January 2019, and we are excited about the future. Thank you to Conor O'Higgins for writing this article. Please join us in our chat channels. Bye! Beam Vlogs by Rascal from the Rabbit Hole.